So let me put it to you. If, in fact, we did have a Biden presidency, what is the main difference that might make, make in our economy? After all, we've got a lot of problems that just won't go away. Joe, we, uh, David, we'd be competent again and we'd care again. We'd have a government that could carry out basic functions based on expertise like all other countries do. We'd have tests that came back in less than two weeks. We'd have masks for everyone who needed them. We'd have federal government helping uh, the states. We'd have um, a system that worked. We wouldn't insult um, and alienate all our allies around uh, the world. We'd be basically competent in the work of government, whether you had a conservative or whether you had a progressive ideology. And we'd care. We would care about a country that was still divided by race. We would care about middle class people who literally weren't able to feed their kids because they lost their jobs because of pandemic. We would be fighting to protect people who were unemployed rather than to slash their benefits. We would be fighting to protect the ability of teachers to go to school in safe ways rather than slashing the budget for uh, schools. It's really not very complicated and fundamentally it's about values that are pretty universal. Nobody's against being competent. Nobody's against caring uh, for all Americans. And those are the things we've lost, and those are the things that Joe Biden's been fighting for for 40-some years in uh, public life. So, Larry, some people you know and I know who are investors, who are on Wall Street, who are in business, might say competence is great, caring is great. At the same time, we need real growth, and the priorities are wrong for Joe Biden because at least Donald Trump put as his priorities growth of the economy. We need that growth. Can Joe Biden bring that back with his competence and his caring? Well, I think we should start with this. If you look consistently, for 50 years, 60 years actually, Democratic administrations produce more rapid growth in median family incomes. Democratic administrations produce more rapid growth in real wages. Democratic administrations produce lower unemployment. Now, you might say that's because they don't care about business. But here's the thing. Because building from the middle out is the economic strategy that works, Democratic administrations produce more rapid growth in corporate profits. Democratic administrations produce better returns for stock market investors. That pattern was first pointed out three decades ago, and it's continued to be true over the subsequent uh, three decades. And that will be true with a Biden presidency. Certainly, we're not looking at a strong period uh, for American business with the profit figures we're seeing right now, or a strong period for American labor with the unemployment figures that uh, we're seeing uh, right now. So we're going to see an economic strategy that enables the United States to compete. When we alienate every other country in the world, talking about steel tariffs on Canada for national security reasons, we are putting it to American exports and putting it to American uh, business. And so the way to help the economy the way to rescue from problems that have been made by the other administration is George uh, Bill Clinton turned around a mess that he had inherited. Barack Obama turned around a mess that he inherited. Jimmy Carter inherited a recession. John Kennedy inherited a uh, recession, a commitment to policies that expand the economy from the middle out, going back to FDR, 
That has been uh, the commitment of Democratic presidents, and Joe Biden will be in that tradition. And the historical evidence is that it works. And the historical evidence is that the trickle down, short, short effort to reduce the taxes of big donors doesn't work. It produces stock market bubbles that ultimately implode and lead to grave recessions. And that's not the right economic strategy for our country. Larry, help us understand, if you can, one aspect about Joe Biden's plans. He has some very robust plans when it comes to the, the climate, infrastructure, education, which will cost a fair amount of money, which he owns up to. And he talks about taxes, uh, taxes on corporations, taxes on some wealthy individuals to pay for that. At the same time, he says that we have to be careful about taxes depending on where the economy is. Give us a sense of the sequencing here. Is this going to be borrowing money until we can afford actually to raise the taxes, or will there be taxes from day one? Yeah, that, that's for uh, a President Biden to declare and Congress to legislate, and the answers will depend on where we where the economy uh, is uh, at the time. I'll tell you though, David, uh, I don't think austerity economics is the answer in this moment. We're about to get a huge demonstration of that from the huge fiscal cliff the country's about to go over because the Republicans wouldn't negotiate uh, with uh, the Democrats. If we invest, in our future. That is taking a burden off my children. It is taking a burden off your children. You know, the interest rate after correcting for inflation is negative. It's below zero in the United States right now. But when we defer maintenance on our nation's roads, when we allow our children to lose intelligence because they have to drink in the water, when it takes 25% longer to fly from Boston to Washington than it did 50 years ago because we've screwed up our air traffic control system. When we make those non-investments, when we allow those infrastructure deficits, they compound to burden our children much more than some accumulation of paper debt. So yes, we've got to make the right choices about borrowing uh, money and how much to borrow now and in what ways we should tax those with uh, the highest income. But that's not the important deficit we have in our country. The important deficit we have in our country is that we somehow decided we couldn't afford to invest in having pandemic readiness. And we cut all those programs because people were fixated on the deficit. The important deficit in our country is we can't afford to buy tests even though the benefit of each test that we give is probably over $1,000 in terms of the costs of uh, the pandemic and the disease uh, that, is, uh, that is prevented. Let's focus on the things that are most important, and they are not austerity economics at a moment of uh, zero uh, interest rates. They are investing in uh, the future, and that is what the Biden program is all about, along with making sure that everybody has a chance to share in that uh, prosperity. Think about it. When it looks like the stock price of some companies might fail or they might not be able to issue debt at a low interest rate, we rush to the rescue with quantitative easing. When unemployed people have hungry kids, Congress goes into recess with the enthusiasm of the president. It's not right. And it's not that hard uh, to fix. The profoundly good news for a Biden administration amidst all the problems, David, is that there are huge amounts of low-hanging fruit, whether it's in protecting the environment, whether it's in helping kids uh, go to college, whether it's in fixing 
uh, health insurance, whether it's in, can you believe it? There were 100 people yep. with incomes of $10 million who didn't file any tax return, and the IRS made no effort to right. go after them a few years ago. Right. We as a country can do much better than that. Yeah. All it takes yeah. is competence and caring. And okay. that's what I think is yeah. uh, the core of what this election's going to be about. Do we want yeah. more government yeah. like the government we've had for the last four years? Or do we want government that is competent and cares? We had pandemics right. and epidemics four years ago. Right. Ebola, H1N1. Right. They didn't change all <clears throat> our lives. Yeah. That's what happens yeah. when you have competent government. And I think we can have it again.